Grade 6 Math, number 8.4, Probability and Predictions. We can make predictions, educated guesses, based on theoretical probability. We've been talking about theoretical and experimental probability over the last few videos. Well, we can use a proportion or a percent to make predictions. Now remember, theoretical probability is the P is the probability, and the event is the thing we're looking for. And it's written as a ratio. The number of ways it can occur is the numerator, and the total of equally likely outcomes is the denominator. All right? So it can see either be a, a ratio or proportion, or it could be a percent. Okay? Bob works at a microchip manufacturing company, and from systematic sampling of every 100 microchips, he found two were defective. Predict the number of defective chips in a shipment of 1,500 microchips. All right, what we're looking for is defective, so the probability of defective is 2 out of 100. See? He found 2 of 100. So that's 0 0.02. Two were defective out of 100 total. All we have to do is multiply the 1,500 times the 0 0.02 to predict how many are defective. We multiply 1,500 times 0 0.02, and because there's two hops in the equation, we put two hops in the product, and we get 30 as our prediction of defective microchips in the shipment of 1,500. See? 30 over 1,500. It's a ratio, proportion. Now, this is not the exact amount because he didn't check each single microchip. He's just guessing that because 2 out of 100 are defective, that 30 are going to be defective out of the 1,500. See? It's a prediction, not an exact amount. All right? A random sampling of pets in Bob's apartment complex is represented by the circle graph. If there's 200 apartments in the complex, how many do not have a pet? Well, it says 10, no pet. What we do is we count how many there's total. 16 and 4 is 20, and 10 is 30, and 10 is 40. So out of 40, 10 have no pets. 10 out of 40 is 1 fourth or 25 over 100, so 25% of the apartments don't have a pet. Well, how many do not have a pet? Well, if there's 200 apartments, we would multiply the 100 times 2 and the 25 times 2, and we'd know that 50 out of the 200 apartments do not have a pet. How about dogs? Well, it says that 16 out of the 40 have dogs. So all we have to do is multiply it by 2.5 to get to 100 for the denominator, and we know that 40 out of 100 have dogs, or 40%. Multiply those by 2 to get the denominator to 200, and we know 80 apartments have dogs. See? See how we did that? All right. A large bin holds 150 apples. The probability that a randomly chosen apple will be bruised is 12%. So predict the number of bruised apples in the barrel. Well, remember, 12% means parts of 100. So that means 12 out of 100. But it's holding 150. Well, the probability that an apple is bruised is 12 out of 100. Let's get the denominator to 150, like this. We'll multiply them both by 1.5, and that'll get the 100 to 150 and the 12 to 18. So we know that we can predict 18 bruised apples are in this barrel. Okay? So here's a bonus one. Bob has 10 pairs of loose socks in his drawer. He did not fold them together. They're all loose and separate, okay? Six pairs are white and four pairs are blue. If he gets dressed in the dark, what's the least number he needs to take from the drawer to have a matching pair? He can't see what he's doing, and he reaches in the drawer and he grabs one. It could be white or it could be blue. He reaches in the drawer and he grabs another one. It could be white or it could be blue. How many times is he going to have to reach in the drawer before he has a matching pair? Can you figure this one out? This is kind of a famous riddle. The answer is three. If he picks a white one the first time and a white one the second time, then he does have a pair. But what if he picks a white one and a blue one? Whatever he picks... Next, the third sock is going to match the first or second one. So to absolutely make sure that he has a matching pair, he has to pull three socks from the drawer. See? That's probability. All right. We're going to continue on. We've got one more unit in this chapter. 
and we're going to cover that one next. I hope that this was uh, educational for you and you understood what we were doing about making predictions, and I'll see you next video. Bye.